Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. Hey, we're talking boats again today. And in today's video, the proper and safe way on how to remove a 3.0 liter Mer Cruiser inboard engine carburetor. Let's get started. All right, DIYers, we are inside the garage, and in front of us is my grandma's 1989 glass port. And it's got a 3.0 liter Mer Cruiser inboard. And we will get to that here shortly to remove our carburetor. Let's hop to the back where it has an Alpha 1 Gen 1 outdrive as shown there. And scrolling above right now, as well as down below in the comments section and description section will be a link that takes you directly to our video playlist that contains a large amount of helpful videos on fixing boats and jet skis. And included in that mix is how to rebuild an outdrive as well as bellows. Definitely check that out. Let's hop inside the boat where we can gain access to our inboard engine. Inside the boat now into a top view of our 3.0 liter Mer Cruiser engine, as you see here. And we do our best to keep it clean. And step number one, very important. In our case, we at least remove the black negative cable from the battery and cut all electrical power to the system. However, we have been doing quite a lot of maintenance and DIY project videos of repairs on this engine. Battery's not even connected. So again, at a minimum, disconnect the black negative cable from your battery. And in our case, the carburetor is port side, as you see here. And a quick rundown of the carburetor or how the fuel gets to the carburetor. And let's go off here and go all the way on top of the engine and follow this fuel line all the way down to our fuel pump right there. As you can see, here's the top portion of the pump and you have a little sight tube or line. And a quick clarification or explanation on that. In the event that you ever see fuel in there, well, you need to replace your entire pump because the diaphragm has ruptured. And there are no diaphragm rebuild kits for our pumps. You have to actually replace this as a whole housing, which is okay. And down below, right down in there, is where our fuel filter is. And here's the fuel line that feeds all the way inside the boat and all the way up to the gas tank. So again, once you pour fuel into the filler neck and inside the tank and start the engine while the engine is running, fuel is coming all the way back here into your fuel filter, through your pump and upstream in the hard fuel line right here all the way up and over and on top of the engine and into a rubber hose and then into the hard mounted fitting or elbow fitting that feeds fuel into the carburetor. I just wanted to show you that before we move on. What we'll do next is carefully remove this nut and pull our flame arrestor off the top of the carburetor. Here we are port side and to a different view of our carburetor as you see here. And before we continue knocking out the removal of that carburetor, I wanna shift gears down below Here's our hydraulic trim motor, reservoir, and solenoid system. And this is the entire unit, as you know, that feeds hydraulic fluid and electrical power out to the outdrive and raises it and lowers it. And in that playlist that was scrolling above a bit ago, as well as down below, will be helpful video links on how to replace your trim solenoids in the event that your outdrive is not trimming up or down, as well as replacing your trim rams and hoses and bleeding the air out of that entire hydraulic system. So I wanted to show you that. Now to a closer view of the top portion of our carburetor and the flame arrestor. And on the very center top portion is a 7 16 nut. We're going to carefully remove that and you also have a washer. At this point I've got the camera set back and again we are looking port side of our carburetor and on the very top is our flame arrestor. And that threaded stud that feeds all the way through the center portion again has a 7 16 nut. Go ahead and carefully unscrew and remove that. Do not drop this inside the engine. And again, small nut, set that in a safe location. And from here again, you've got that washer. However, I'm going to carefully pinch the washer in place with my thumb. And on the back side, you have a small rubber hose that feeds off the top portion of the engine on its respective fitting and into the flame arrestor on this side. Go ahead and carefully pull up and you can remove the entire flame arrestor from the top of the carburetor. Again, I pinch that washer in place with my thumb. I will now grab it and I will set this entire part in a safe location. I'm now going to reinsert that little washer as shown here, as well as the respective nut. And do not cross thread this on, nor drop it inside the carburetor. That would not be good. And get that nut to a point where it's not going to come off in any manner and get lost. Next, we've got a few electrical connections and it's a really good time to take photos. In our case, we have a purple one here. 
go ahead and carefully grab the connection point rather than the wire and pull it off. There it is. Again, photos go a long way. In addition, we've got a black wire feeding into a flathead screw fitting. We are going to carefully unscrew and remove that screw. And I am going to zoom in and show that. Again, right here. Same thing, do not drop any of the hardware inside the engine. Go ahead and carefully unscrew it by hand. I've got this little piece right here. Do not lose that. I'll set that in a safe location. I will pull the screw out, followed by grabbing that piece, putting the screw back in and screwing it back inside the fitting or insert it just came out of. Again, stay organized, do not lose anything. There we go. And on the right hand side, there is the same flathead screw and fitting, but no wire feeds into it and connects to it. So I'm going to again, leave the left screw loose. So when it comes time to reinstall the carburetor, I know which screw the black wire goes onto. Now to a top view and referencing the electrical wiring we just removed. Again, the purple wire went on that little fitting or connection right there. And the black wire over here went on this screw right there. And what we'll do next is carefully unscrew and loosen up this worm gear clamp to pull the rubber hose off the hard fuel fitting and elbow feeding into the threaded insert of the carburetor itself. And a quick reposition of the camera. And again, this is the fuel hose or line that I was just referencing. We are going to loosen up this flathead screw and worm gear clamp and shift it up onto the hose and off of the actual hard fitting here. However, before I do that, I'm going to come to the back elbow fitting here, feeding off the starboard side of the carburetor barrel or inlet. And we have a sight line or fuel sight hose that again allows you to see if there's any fuel inside this hose feeding from here all the way down to the fuel pump itself. And as I mentioned a bit ago, if there is, that entire fuel pump housing needs to be replaced because again, the diaphragm has failed. However, I'm going to carefully push down on this hose at this fitting right here to pull it off of the elbow fitting without breaking it. And be very careful as you do this DIYers, you do not want to break this. And I'll get my hand underneath it. And at the same time, I'm going to support about an inch or two out as I simultaneously push down with my left finger here and pull it off of the elbow fitting. And it's making progress as you see. There we go. It has been removed. I will carefully allow that just to rest on its own. And we now can direct our attention to this flathead screw and unscrew it and shift the worm gear clamp up onto the hose. However, a close up view of that part we just pulled off. See that? And fortunately for us, the last time this was serviced, the technician or DIYer lubricated this elbow fitting, making it very convenient to pull this off of the fitting. If that was not lubricated, that would have been a disaster. Take a step back. I'm going to position the camera in a way where you can get a better view of us loosening and removing the remainder parts of the carburetor. And not sure if you can hear it, but it is raining hard. Thank goodness we're inside a garage. With the camera set back, what I'll do next is come in with some paper towel and just protect the electrical wiring. And I'm going to again loosen up this flathead screw, shift the worm gear upward, and carefully pull the hose off the hard mounted fitting. And be advised, it will leak fuel. Here we go. And do a gentle twist just to break it free. Try to stay away from gouging this with a screwdriver. That would not be good. And just shift it back. And again, it's going to leak fuel, so I'll bring the towel up and catch that fuel. There we go. As shown there. And I'll replace it with fresh paper towel as I remove the remainder parts. Next, I'll come over to my throttle cable where it secures onto the stud that feeds into the linkage for the carburetor. And in our case, we've got a 3 8 nut and washer on the aft portion of that connection. And I will use my quarter inch Craftsman ratchet with, again, the 3 8 socket. And do not tug at this fitting. You don't want to break it or damage anything. And it's important to know, before you start this project and start removing stuff, make sure your actual throttle up in your captain's seat is in the neutral position, not in forward nor in reverse.
There's the small nut. And again, remove the washer. Do not drop it inside the engine. And carefully pull the throttle cable off of the stud here. And you might need to come up top and remove it from the upper housing that the barrel secures into. There we go, as you see there. And from here, we are left with our four securing nuts that secure onto the threaded bolts that come out of the manifold. In our case, they are 7 16 in size. And for that, I've grabbed my 3 8 ratchet, an extension, and the 7 16 deep socket. And I'm going to shift the paper towel to the side. And here is one nut, and on the back side you see an additional nut, and you've got two on the aft section or portion of the carburetor. And this one I can come in from above and carefully unscrew. And just like everything else, below the nut is a washer. Do not lose that. And before moving on, I am going to re-secure the washer and nut to the stud that the throttle cable connects onto. Again, I do not want to lose any of my hardware. And shown there. And I might be able to get the washer out. There it is. Come to the back side. Same thing. Go ahead and loosen and remove both the 716 nut and washer. And the washer. Now to the aft or rear. Now to get that back washer, I'm grabbing a pick tool. And this is a must have in your toolbox. And down below in the comment section as well as the description section will be a link on where to purchase a pick tool set like this. And the last of the four nuts is kind of tricky to get to. I'm transitioning to my quarter inch ratchet and 7 16 socket as shown here. And I'm going to position it in a way where I can loosen and remove it. And as you loosen this up, the last thing you want to do is bend or damage any of the linkage on this portion of your carburetor. That would not be good. And as you remove this fourth and final nut, if that's the one you do last, you'll get to a point where your quarter inch ratchet and socket will get stuck if you're not careful. So loosen it to a point where you can carefully and conveniently remove the ratchet and socket and then transition just to a standard wrench. Followed by the washer. And from here, make sure you have a nice little platform or container or box for your carburetor to go into when you pull it off the manifold or top portion of the engine. And a couple things to point out before I start pulling the carburetor from the manifold and separating it from the gasket. It's a really good idea to put a rag over the top portion of the carburetor after you remove that full top piece, the flame arrestor, because the last thing you want is any of the hardware or anything else falling inside the carburetor and making its way down and inside the manifold and engine. If you drop any hardware inside there, that makes for an extremely bad day. In addition, in the event that your throttle cable is not sliding off the pin right here, don't force it to a point where you bend the entire shaft or rod up top. Because if that happens and this part is bent, this plastic piece right here that connects to this stud here will no longer be able to shift back and forth on that rod conveniently because, again, it will be bent. And that bent portion of the rod making its way inside the plastic housing here will bind up and your throttle will degrade significantly. So if that's the case and it's tough to get off this little stud, leave it as is. And as you pull the carburetor up and off the manifold and separate it from the gasket, pull it in a forward and up manner to slide that little stud out of its hole on the housing. And again, paper towels just to protect the electrical wiring. And carefully grab it and begin pulling it up. As shown there. And it is heavy. And I'll set it all the way up on the cardboard platform I've got up top. I'll show you that here shortly. However, from here, make sure you have a clean towel. And I'm going to just clean up and absorb any of the fuel on the mating surface. And you can see it's pretty dirty. I'm going to fold that in so it doesn't allow any of that debris to fall inside the manifold. 
and you can see the gasket right here. You want to remove 100% of this gasket and do your absolute best not to allow any of this gasket to fall inside the manifold. If it does, I see a piece right here. Go ahead and pull it out to alleviate it getting sucked inside the engine and going somewhere where it doesn't belong and damaging your engine. That would not be good. And from here, I've got a very fine tip flathead screwdriver and I'm just going to carefully begin removing the gasket, as you see there. And I am going to put some paper towel inside there to again alleviate any debris going inside the manifold. And I'll just carefully pull up on the gasket as I simultaneously shift the screwdriver in between the mating surface and the gasket. And it might come off in several pieces, but that's okay. It's been on there for 10 years, DIYers. Literally, the last time our carburetor was serviced or rebuilt was 10 years ago. And in our case, it is going to come off in pieces, but that's fine. followed by a gentle swipe with a paper towel away from the manifold holes. And one last piece of the gasket right here. From here I'll pull up the paper towels. And before you install your brand new gasket onto the mating surface of the manifold, you must ensure that 100% of all the old remains of the old gasket are removed. Because if they aren't, and you install that brand new gasket, it is not going to create the required seal at this exact mating surface in between the carburetor and manifold as it is supposed to. Now to a close-up view of the internal portion of the manifold as you see there. And what I'm going to do next is grab a clean towel as shown here. Not a paper towel, but an actual rag. Again, clean. No oil, no gas, no dirt, no debris, no grime, no nothing on it. And rest it as shown here. And really block the entire opening of the manifold. After accomplishing that, I'm going to reinsert all of my nuts and washers. Again, stay organized. Do not lose any of your hardware. And I'm putting the washers and nuts on the exact same stud they came off of during the removal process. And I'll use the ratchet to give it a couple additional turns just to ensure that they never come loose when the carburetor is off. In a quick recap, your throttle cable was removed from the stud on the linkages of the carburetor. The fuel sight line, as shown here, removed from the elbow fitting the black electrical wire, as well as the purple electrical wire. Again, stay organized and take photos before you start removing anything. Taking a step back and before we direct our attention to our removed carburetor, what I did next was grab a sandwich bag and zip tie and I grabbed the rubber fuel hose as well as the sight hose and wrapped it inside the plastic bag just to prevent any fuel leaking inside the boat. It's unlikely that it will because you saw it drain out and we don't even have our battery connected, which means we're not even going to start the engine. That would be a very bad thing to do with your carburetor removed. Fuel would shoot out of this hose and all over your boat. Don't do that. And coming up top, where I've got just a piece of cardboard resting on the aft hull of the boat, as well as our flame arrestor. And there it is. Hopping over starboard side of our inboard engine, and before we hop out of the boat and reposition our removed carburetor, I do want to come on starboard side, reference our sight line here and the hard fuel line, feeding all the way down to the fuel pump. And coming all the way down to this housing right here, that is where our fuel filter is on the very bottom portion of our fuel pump. And at a later date, we are going to replace our fuel filter, and there is our exact OEM part number for our engine. I wanted to show you that first. At this point, I've got the cover over the inboard engine, and again, we're looking at a top view of our removed carburetor and the flame arrestor. And it's unlikely, but I am going to try to put our carburetor inside a Ziploc bag. And I just wanted to show you the back side of it, or different views of it that you did not get to see during the video, as you see right there. And surprisingly, it fit inside the gallon Ziploc bag very nicely. All right, DIYers, we are at the workstation, and here's my mom and dad's 2003 Sea-Doo GTX in-house for a full engine removal and overhaul. That'll be fun. Let's hop to the workbench.
making our way around the jet ski and to the workbench. Always, always busy here. And here is the flame arrestor as well as the carburetor inside Ziploc bags. And I'm going to transport this to my local marina and they are going to rebuild it for a very friendly price. And I will also put it in an additional Ziploc bag because in the event that the Ziploc bag you're looking at right now gives way and it begins to leak, well, I don't want fuel inside my vehicle. That would not be good. And again, the flame arrestor. Taking a big step back, poor side of the jet ski and DIYs, that is it. We hope this helps. And again, we're going to head to our local marina and drop off the just removed carburetor and they are going to rebuild it. They said it'd take about four, maybe five days tops. But that's okay because over the next few days, I will be removing the 951 DI or 951 direct injection engine from this jet ski. And that link will be down below in the comment section. Definitely check that out if you're interested in working on jet skis. Again, we hope this helps. Hey, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.